Hello and welcome to the show. We're back on Car Mechanic Simulator, going to be, well, starting really the restoration work on this crazy looking car. I love it. The uh, De Delahaye, I think that's how it's pronounced. De yeah, makes sense to me. Uh, Delahaye replica. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy looking but fantastic uh, styled car. Uh, we've got another bloody i6 to pull apart, of course we do. Uh, it's was from a barn find as opposed to from a junkyard so fingers crossed uh, we should have most of the parts on this vehicle we're not gonna have all of them and of course while we have a high percentage chance of repairing stuff it's uh, not going to be we're not gonna get absolutely everything repaired but we should have we should hopefully get more parts repaired than we would on, certainly from a, a car that we grabbed from the junkyard. So we might not actually have to buy too much for this uh, for this car. I mean, it is missing a carburetor and so on. There will be some bits going, but yeah, on the whole, it'll be more complete. Maybe this one will have a oil pan. Maybe it'll actually have bearings. <gasps> Could this be the first? I've got to go check this out immediately. This is the exciting. We're doing the exciting part of the video straight away. Have we got an oil pan? No. <laughs> that was too much. Okay, I might have asked a bit too much of it. We do seem to have bearings, though. Well, at least some bearings. Maybe not all of them, but we have bearings. Bloody hell. Uh, yeah, the game doesn't like giving cars um, on here. Certainly the junkyard car's oil pans. The reason being is all it takes is one bearing to be missing and it won't, the game wouldn't allow you to put the oil pan on. At least that's, that's what I believe. That's what someone, how someone explained it and it makes sense to me. Uh, so yeah, that's why we ne uh, never see... I don't think we've ever had an oil pan come in on one of these cars. As far as I know, we've never had an oil pan come in on, uh, on one of these vehicles. I don't know if we're going to have... Ooh, game's going a little bit laggy. Why are you doing that, computer? Um, or game. More, probably more likely game fault, but yeah, it's having real issues at the moment. Is that all? No, I'm not rendering anything out at the moment. And sometimes if you are uh, rendering uh, rendering videos or so on, uh, games won't run particularly smoothly. But normally my computer's powerful enough not to bother, and I tend not to do it anyway. But uh, yeah, I don't know why it's going all uh, a little bit funky on the old performance today. Let's, uh, let's hope it's not crashing recordings. That's always the fear. Uh, shall we just leave you for a minute? I mean, it could, I guess, potentially be the mod for whatever reason. Playing funny buggers with uh, with the game. I wouldn't, wouldn't expect it to because, well, at the end of the day, while well, yes, this is not a car that is normally found in the game, it is, uh, you know, using parts that are. It might be slightly different uh, configuration to an extent, but on the whole, yeah, this is the you know, suspension that you'll see on another vehicle in the game. We've got relatively complicated suspension going on at the rear of this. Oh, do we have a fuel pump as well? That's another thing that uh, we might... <gasps> we do! It's the first time we've had a fuel pump in something. Uh, <laughs> the joys of getting cars out of barns rather than just picking up the wrecks from the junkyard. They actually come with stuff. Also, quite impressed that, uh, well, I guess, with the, the sort of the body style of this one, we see with a few mods having, you know, like sway bars that don't quite connect properly because they're trying to make it fit in around with other bits of the car, which, you know, is fair enough. At the moment, we can't import custom... They haven't imported custom parts to the game yet, just full cars making use of bits already there. This actually looks like everything is all connected up as it should be. That's, uh... That's, yeah, some quite quite impressive work, getting all of this to uh, manage to meld together. But here we've also got a non complete rust part like this drive shaft would be okay it wouldn't have fallen apart from rust it's 60 percent i might have expected a little bit better percentage if, if anything from the condition of that uh, we've also got a starter mode we've got all of the rare part apart from of course the oil pan all of the rare parts are being found on this <laughs> vehicle yeah i should have done more barn find cars rather than searching around the junkyard although barn find cars are considerably considerably more expensive because well they have more parts and often in better condition uh, the bodywork especially will be in uh, a generally sort of like 80 ish percent condition and largely there so <laughs> you know it's easier easier to work on there'll be less there'll be less profit in this car but I'm hoping that it's still gonna be quite a valuable car anyway it was 130 something thousand to buy in the first place and it was worth about 140 I could have made a profit immediately so by the time I'm finished working on this, we should 
fingers crossed, have turned a nice bit of a profit. Also, now the game's seen. I don't know. Don't, I shouldn't say anything because, of course, the curse of the commentator. If you say something is going well, it will immediately crash and burn. So, we're not going to say anything about the game running janky or otherwise. Okay, this is a small, I say a small bit of a concern. The big, uh, sort of large axle parts, I guess. What is it? Sub suspension cross member, there we go. Is a, it can, I say a concern. If I'm trying to make as much profit as possible, I'd like this to come out in good condition and it doesn't look great. It's 16%. <laughs> so, basically on the limit of uh, what can be repaired. Uh, so there we go. Oh, I've got to put the card down. I want to put the card down to get the starter out and then put it back up again to get the gearbox out before we can uh, yank the whole engine clean out and put that on the stand. It'll be, again, an easier way of doing things. Yank the starter motor off from there and then up we go again for the gearbox. Now, I do potentially have some parts lying around from previous builds. Not sure we have too many. Uh, unfortunately, the bits that tend to, that we tend to break quite, I say tend to break quite a lot of, but they tend not to quite be uh, things like the brake caliper cylinder things. Yeah, those we might have repairable ones in this, but there's kind of always a chance that one might break, and in yeah, in breaking that, we kind of end up losing them, losing more over time. So we might only be able to repair two out of the four that go on this. And we might have a whole stack in our inventory, but we keep, yeah, sort of getting behind ourselves with those parts, it seems, at the moment. I guess we could go steal some stuff off the big barge next to us. If I wanted to, I guess, because that will have certainly some brake components that we can borrow. Maybe I'll end up doing that again. We'll have to see how, how things pan out with this. I think I have to take the manifolds off before I can extract the engine. That's why I am... Uh, Again, farting around with putting this up and down, because I forgot I have to take off the manifold before I can take off that part of it for whatever reason. Still not sure on that. Okay, can we go back to the front of the car now and finish what we were doing on here and pray the front cross member doesn't look too bad in terms of condition. Which is, again, it is nice if we can get that at a nice, safe, repairable level. There's never any guarantees, but if we can have it at a nice, safe, repairable level... That would be helpful. Uh, double wishbone suspension stuff at the front. I think we still have some springs and shock absorbers lying around again from previous, from the, a couple of the previous donor cars that uh, had extra parts that we managed to get repaired up. So that will be nice. Yeah, I'm still thoroughly impressed with the uh, kind of engineering that's got in the um, getting all of the mechanics of this to fit how you would expect them to. That is quite uh, quite a job on this. It's a relatively compact car as well. It's not exactly like you've got uh, a lot of space. Although Brassel makes it easier having a compact car. So you don't have to stretch stuff out as much. Um, yeah, I don't know how <laughs> having never ever seen I don't think I've ever heard of one of these cars before uh, so let alone see know what on earth it would look like. Uh, perhaps that could also help. You could have a little bit more freedom to uh, design the vehicle. Either way, yeah, that's very, very well very well made. Uh, let's grab the front end off and we'll get some headlights off as well. I think that's all of the bodywork gone. It looks terrifying without the headlight. <laughs> like something out of a horror film. Let's get that radiator and let's go and uh, crane. There you are. I remember where stuff is. Ish. Move equipment to our to see. Pull that engine out of the car, and that is pretty much, oh, with the exception of the E. Um, I don't really want to be sat on there particularly. I was going to go disassemble, tear this stuff out of the car as well. That will be the vehicle down to just the chassis as far as I can tell. Looks funky inside, I'll say that much. I mean, we, we were going for funky, let's face it. We were going for something different when we came across that car, so... <laughs> There we have it, add an engine onto there, and we are back at a familiar, familiar ground. Having worked on V8s almost exclusively for a while, I'm now apparently working on I6s almost exclusively. I mean, I, I would like some other engines to possibly work on at some point, but uh, yeah, apparently this is what we are going f going for on these uh, on these cars. I'm kind of looking forward to coming across some some of the other mods that I've got installed on here uh, should have some uh, some different engines to play around with. I'll be curious to see uh, how they how they kind of pan out, if you like. Yeah, there are stacks of mods. In fact, there are 
probably more mods coming out. There are a lot more mods coming out than I could possibly cover. There's loads of cars around the place, which is great. It's, it's fantastic. It keeps a game like this. Uh, keeps it like this fresh. Keeps it, I say, keeps it alive. But there's always something new if you want it. And as, a, as we've seen, the quality of them is uh, fantastic as well. So, yeah, there is a, there is a lot of vehicles potentially to go and uh, repair up and to, to mess around with. And hopefully, in the not too distant future, even be able to improve the performance of whenever that eventually comes out. I, I said I, I saw somewhere it's supposed to be coming fairly soon, but quite when fairly soon is. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I thought it was going to be sooner than it has been, but there we go. Uh, let's get rid of all of the of the camshaft. I, you don't seem to come across, at least I haven't come across, performance parts in the uh, junkyard. At the, well, I say any more. I assume they will make their way back in when the sort of proper performance stuff is added. They used to be something that you could search around. You could never use them because you, engines would never allow them to be fitted. But uh, there was... Uh, they were around. I might even have some left in my storehouse. But yeah, they're, they're currently not something that I can seem to find. If other people have come across them in the junkyard, then they're doing a better job of finding stuff than me. You, know, you used to come across them regularly, now you don't. So, suggests to me that uh, or they're probably out of the game currently. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Well, I say hopefully. Hopefully it will not be too long until we uh, see them back in. Because that kind of... In Again, it's... It motivates you to keep cars. It motivates you to kind of work on cars. I mean, I'm keeping the hot rod just because that took so bloody long to uh, rebuild. And I re rebuilt it in a slightly uh, slightly different way in the, you know, not buying any parts, having to scavenge for a lot of them. It's taken six or so cars to, to get it together. So it kind of has a, a bit of a story, if you like. But outside from that, don't necessarily see the, the purpose of keeping cars at the moment, uh, but yeah, with with the possibilities of being able to upgrade them, making them faster, and so on, that uh, will will be a good addition. Will be a very good addition uh, to this uh, to this game. Plus, I look forward to making crazy cars because that's what we're all about here at Foul Race. <laughs> like having a um, five or six hundred horsepower hot rod is all well and good, but I want to have a thousand four hundred horsepower hot rod. And that's that's more like it, <laughs> and that sort of stuff. Or getting one of these i6 cars and giving them three or four hundred horsepower rather than the piddly hundred. Oh crap! That's got an awful engine block. All of that, you've got a terrible, terrible engine block. Of course, the the one you know, the kind of foundation for all of the engine. Yeah, and that's terrible. Uh, shall we, while we're here, where's that detailing kit? This one here. Move you, we'll get that. Seeing as the car's all stripped out, we might as well... Uh, not that it actually makes a blind bit of difference, but we might as well use that here. Uh, how much is just the chassis worth? I'm curious. At $40, $48,000 for just... Just the chassis on its own. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be as valuable as that skyline that we worked on. But it's not going to be too, too bad, I don't think. Now begins the long, arduous process of spamming through all of these parts. And there's going to be a lot of them, so it'll take a while. And we are done with the repairing. Of course, yeah, we lost some bits along the way. Nothing major, though. I think of the ones that I paid attention to, we lost a brake disc, but... Uh... That is about it. Unfortunately, we don't have an engine block to start with, so we are going to have to get a, well, entirely fresh one, which is a shame. It's going to cost me $1,800, but it is something that is, let's face it, rather needed. Wow, we've got a lot of crappy engine blocks in our inventory. <laughs> there we go. We do have a crankshaft. Didn't come with a filter. Perhaps not too surprised about that one. Let's have a look. How many... Oh, we've got some pistons that can go back on. We're not going to have a full engine, but that's okay. That's to be expected. All right, it's the piston rings that we're going to have uh, missing. So we've got three more good pistons. Uh, it's close. Actually, tell a lie. We already have one. <laughs> from, from my immediate kind of... Uh, I sort of cursory look over it was a um, we're going to need a fair few. We actually only need one. One piston ring is the only only unsalvageable part from all of those. Which I will I will take. I will take as odds. Can we get I don't think we've got quite all of the rod caps either. It looks like we're gonna have five out of the ones needed. We have got all of these though, which is good. This is a much easier way of rebuilding cars. It's not as profitable, but <laughs> 
does make your life considerably uh, or considerably less trips to the tablet store to uh, get new parts. And we have got three more of these to go. And no, again, the, the, the cursory... I think I'm used to building V8s and I'm used to needing eight of stuff and I'm used to expecting it to be that many that are broken. And we are doing surprisingly well. I'm really, really amazed, even with it being a barn find, that we've got all of those saved, all of those rescued. We have an alternator to go on as well. That's in good nick. The engine head I did see. Oh, we've got two engine heads. When do we... Oh, it must have been from one of the donor... Probably the Porsche, I think, we might have had uh, with the donor, the donor i6. Uh, fuel filter, we didn't come with one. Camshafts, both of those are good. Oh, I've got a million bearings again. Carburetors, only one of those is good, and uh, yeah, we need, we're needing two carburetors. The air filters are fine, though. I don't know why I put the middle one on, but there we go. That's, that's, that's the more important one, apparently. We're going to need a cam gear. We have got a working water pump, which is good. Pulley is also there. I'm going to just kind of stick on all of the bits that we do have, see how far I can get through with this build on the parts that we currently have lying around. We have a spare flywheel, we do have a spare clutch plate as well. Again, these may well be bits from, I think the Porsche donor car was the last one, because the Skylight we didn't have a donor, a uh, second donor car for, and that was an i6. The Porsche, yeah, these are, these are some of these are bits from, uh, bits of Porsche going into uh, making the Della Hay. I'm, I'm, again, I'm fine with that. It might as well make the most of the stuff that we do have hanging around. Because, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a fair few bits to stick on the car. Well, I'm getting bored of doing those uh, bearings, so we're going to stick in some spark plugs along the way. So uh, this is a, a very bearing intensive, an intensive engine, and I've kind of... Like, I, I like the i6. I talked about it before with... I think it was our build of the Aston Martin, actually. I, I like the i6 is one of the engines to build on this game. I think it's a very... It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a good looking engine. It's an interesting one to build. Uh, I've built a lot of them now. <laughs> it used to always be, or it has always been for me in the past, the V8s that uh, you work on a lot. They come up a lot. Now, well, I say now, on, on this version of the game, and certainly with the amount of mods I've used, the i6s are apparently uh, quite a popular one. You'll certainly, as well if you're playing through normally, certainly doing like customer jobs and so on, come across a fair few of the old i6 as well. That's a different, again, you know, quite a different engine to work on and so on. Uh, there's, yeah, a fair few, a fair few versions of that uh, hanging around in different vehicles. So that'll be the engine done for now, of course. We're not going to just leave it like that. We'll stop, stick it in the car like that and sell it. Unless that's, uh, that can only go well. Oh, let's take that big one from up, up high, don't we? Uh, climb around the crane. Maybe put you out of the way. Or maybe me not be an idiot would also help. But that can go back over there. Right, okay. Front suspension cross member is sorted. Hopefully we'll have enough rubber bushings. Again, I think these are something that we have had lying around from previous builds. I want to get over there. There we go. Just fight the camera ever so slightly. Uh, with it being such a kind of tightly packed a vehicle, it does make it a little bit more difficult to navigate to install this stuff because everything is literally right on top of each other. Oh, bugger, we don't have a steering rack. Really? Uh, Nah, okay, I guess at the end of the day, steering rack isn't something... It's always worse when you have, like, the main item, like the uh, front, you know, the front suspension cross member or the rear uh, cross members, that you can't attach anything else on to. You've got to go buy that thing. Uh, that's kind of like the main, the main thing, especially when, like me, I'm kind of just curious to see if we have got in how much of this we can, uh, can build up. Calipers, we've got plenty of calipers. Okay, we've got four of these buggers. Nice, so we are going to have enough for this car. That is uh, surprising news, but I will definitely, definitely take it. Uh, we haven't pulled apart, uh, so I guess we do need to remember to do, I haven't pulled apart the shock absorbers yet. This, it's a real easy thing, real dumb thing, but real easy thing to uh, forget about. Uh, can I go over this side? There we go. Click, click teleport your way across. Makes building cars quite, uh, quite a bit easier when you can teleport, funnily. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, brake di it must be one of the rear brake discs that I broke then, or it's possible I might have a spare already hanging around, I guess, but uh, it definitely did break one of those. Caliper is in this side, wheel hub bearings, we've got stacks of those hanging around, which is good. Bottom suspension arm, plenty as well. I can't remember having just pulled the car off. Uh, no, it doesn't have double wishbone suspension at the back, so I don't think we're going to have to worry about running out of upper suspension arms and so on. 
because it, uh, yeah, it's, it's got quite a complicated suspension configuration at the back, especially for such an old car. But there we go, and uh, yeah, it's it's not a uh, uh, not a not a double wishbone one. We don't have to worry about building the rear shocks in this, which is always helpful. Well, apparently we've got plenty of these hanging around because uh, the shock absorbers are a separate thing. Kind of, yeah, makes makes life considerably easier for me. What loads of these? I have a lot more parts hanging about than I thought I did. <laughs> I mean, that that's again, it's a good thing. I'm always always glad to have more parts hanging around, but I uh, was not necessarily expecting so much. Yeah, we'll have enough of these as well. What car did I build then with this configuration at the back? Uh, what did the Porsche have? Can't remember. <laughs> yes, could have could have been the the Porsche. I did clear out my inventory at some point, uh, and I think it was before I started working on that 911. It was when I cleared the inventory out. So, yeah, maybe it was. Maybe it was leftovers from that. And I will have enough brake discs around as well. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I can't believe of all the damn things that it is. I mean, of all of these like consumer, I say these consumables, but things like the the brake pads and so on. It would be the damn caliper cylinders being the ones that get me. Uh, there we go, that's that's a little bit awkward to click on, but never mind. Stacks of rear drive axles. Haven't done wheels, of course, that'll be a job for later. Oh no! After having said everything is going so well, we found a couple of bits back here that are not quite going to be completable. Damn. <laughs> and there we see Curse of the Commentator in, in full effect. Ah. <laughs> I guess I haven't got more on here than I ever expected to, you know, there's going to be something that goes out and it's rear suspension arm B is apparently the unrepairable and that rear suspension arm bugger as well. Uh, wheel hub was good, uh, these were good as well. I didn't even pay any attention to exhausts to see if we've got that saved. Uh, I don't think they were in great condition to begin with, but there might just about be some part of it saveable. Which is the important thing. Caliper and that cylinder. Okay, so that's wheels, wheel suspension, whatever, uh, completed. Oh, we do have the upper suspension arm though. So that's good. And there's the little, of course, the little bushings around here. Let's not forget those. Most uh, most important, most forgetfuling. Uh, did I do the other side? I think I did do the other side. Can't really see from that angle. Yes, we did. Fantastic. Rear muffler is a go. Middle one is also a go. And front exhaust section also a go. Well, how about that? And we've got sway bar end link on this side. I'm pretty sure we put the other one in. Small rubber bushing down there. Uh, and then we need that. Uh, know, rear suspension arm A we can put in. It's the front kind of version of that arm that we can't. Okay. So front version, yeah, that, that bit that we can't and we need one of those. We do have the bushings for it. This is a very bushing intensive car. <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of them are needed. Ooh, did we put the battery on charge? I don't think we did. Let's do that. It's only a 50... Uh, it only needs 50% charge. It's not going to take too long to do all of that. And that will be the Delahaye quite... Uh, quite far along on the restoration job. The radiator's in, brake servos buggered. Yeah, we do still have a couple of little bits and pieces to do. We have got the tyres and the shock absorbers to sort of take apart, see what we can repair over there. The engine is not quite complete, but is quite 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 a long way towards being complete. Again, lots of parts have been saved, if you like, Alright, it's been quite fun actually building car, a car, I say in this manner, but building a uh, yeah, barn find one rather than going for a junkyard car, because a, a lot, it's not quite, but so nearly the running gear uh, all all worked, with a little bit of donor car involved as well from a, from an old Porsche. Yeah, all of my cars, all of the cars that come out of this workshop I think are going to have two or three different cars, bits having gone inside of them, but if they're all in good condition and it all works, then... What's the harm? Uh, however, I will leave you with the uh, horrifyingly scary front bu bumper on this car when it doesn't have... Actually, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I know she, um, we want to do assembly mode. There we go. Is it going to look better with the headlights and without the rest of the bodywork? Uh, yeah, I think it looks I think it looks better without the head... With, with 
even with just the headlights and the rest of the bodywork, it looks slightly less on the terrifying side. Either way, that is going to be it for this video. As ever, I shall link all the mods used in the description so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.